And that was the day that my world felt like it collapsed. And I went through kind of a long dark night of the soul, which is not different than what so many of you are going through right now, wherein I literally felt like there was kind of like a war going on inside my own psyche, wherein I had this one voice that was always beating me up, like an inner dictator, like a Putin within, you know? <laughs> and I had this other voice that was like fighting to like be able to stay above the water so that I could be okay. And I went through therapy, which is something that I know so many of you in the room are probably in right now, as you're finding your way through the weeds of what our culture is presenting you with when it comes to your own value, so much of which is just such a big lie. Okay? And one of the things I discovered along that journey was that one of the ways that I could reclaim the sacred space of my body, and when I say sacred space, I mean sacred self-honoring space. Like, I get to do whatever I want with my body if that's what feels good for my body. Right? And so one of the things that I discovered along that journey, I was suffering so hard, like really suffering hard. I would come home from high school and my dad would find me in a heap on the floor of my bedroom, just sobbing with the Venetian blinds pulled down, I remember this one day in particular, like we didn't have social media when I was in high school. I can only imagine what this is like. But, you know, with winning all my races, my picture would be up at the top of the girls' change room stairwell. Like the Student Athletic Association would put pictures up. And I remember this one day this girl came by with her red pen and she drew on me and she drew a devil's pitchfork and a devil's hat and tail. And so that everybody that walked by that picture in the school got to see me like that out like the devil. And I was 15, and my neurology was just forming, and I was absolutely crushed, you know? And I fell into such a hard relationship with my body, and our bodies have become this site. It's like this place where if we're struggling with anything in our lives, we like come down on our bodies. But our bodies just want to be free. I mean, our bodies didn't do anything, right? Our culture lies to us. And then when we adopt the myths of that, of, of that culture, we start lying to ourselves, and then we go to war right here. Right here where we live. And so I wanted that to be over. I wanted that to be over minute to minute, moment by moment. And what I discovered along the way was mindfulness and meditation. And I learned how to sit and feel and open and basically reclaim the territory of my body and reclaim the bandwidth of my mind. So I want us to just take a minute and do this practice together. So sit up in your chairs, put your feet flat on the floor, Feel your spine rising up. And I'm just going to ask you all, I'm just going to ask you all to take a minute and close your eyes and close your mouth. And we're just going to see if we can do this together because this can be a cool take home. If you're really struggling, I do this practice every day for half an hour. I need to for my own mental health. Like, Several of my family members have died by suicide, my extended family members. I have some of that brain chemistry myself. And so this is a tool that I use so that I can be okay and hopefully feel good even. So just going to notice your breath moving in and out of your body. Notice the sensations of your body. Notice the breath. Notice the texture of your clothing on your skin. And 
let your awareness start to fall open. And see if you can pay attention to that which is aware of anything arising in your experiencing. What is it that's aware of the thoughts? What is it that's aware of the feelings? 